Sesame Street is presented on Idaho Public Television. Minds as well as bodies. Presentation of Vandal Basketball on KUID TV is made possible by Coeur d'Alene Mines Corporation of Coeur d'Alene, one of the country's largest producers of silver and a growing gold company. By the United Dairymen of Idaho, sponsors of sound nutrition through real dairy products. Additional funding provided by Vandal Boosters Incorporated. fans and welcome to the Kibbe Dome on the University of Idaho campus where tonight Big Sky Conference basketball action features the University of Idaho and Idaho State University. Co-hosting tonight's telecast with me is one of the bright young minds in basketball, Dean Lundblad. I'm Len Levine. Dean, the Vandals need to resurge after being knocked off the top spot by the resurging uh, Boise State Broncos. They'll meet a last year's Cinderella team, the Idaho State Bengals, who are in here tonight to avenge an earlier season loss at Pocatello. Well, Len, thank you. It's very nice to work with a veteran sportscaster like you also. Uh, they will have to bounce back, but I think, you know, one, in, one game a couple weeks ago, they did bounce back very well from WSU and played a strong game after a tough loss. Uh, tonight, uh, preparation probably for this team is the same as Boise State. We're going to see this very similar styles very disciplined offenses take 20 30 35 seconds for the shot very patient uh, good balance probably uh, from ISU they have five players in double figures uh, that's going to pose a problem I think for the Vandals there's really no superstar to stop although Rhodey uh, MVP in last year's Big Sky tournaments had kind of a down year he's uh, according to his coach a little frustrated trying to maybe do too much for example he had two points versus Eastern and uh, certainly scored a lot more than that last year and some other games. Okay, we'll be back with the starting lineups after this timeout. In this landscape, all things are possible. Love, mass murder, Hamlet, the pyramids. Here is the storehouse of knowledge, the dreamer of dreams, possessed by every single one of us. This is the landscape of the human brain. We'll explore this awesome creation with today's leading experts and with fascinating real-life stories each week on The Brain. Join us Saturday morning at 10 on KUID. Levine along with Dean Lundblad, courtside of the Kibbe Dome at the University of Idaho, where tonight Big Sky Conference basketball action features the University of Idaho and the Idaho State Bengals. Both clubs have records. The Idaho State Bengals 10 and 9, 4 and 5 in conference play. The Vandals 15 and 7 overall, 7 and 2 in conference play. As we get set for both ball clubs to be announced at courtside, 
the officials, Frank Bassoni, Bob Simpson, and Tom uh, Jackson for tonight's ball game. And uh, evening, if you will, please, here is uh, public address announcer Bill Stellman with the starting lineups. Idaho State. Idaho State is coached by Jim Botan and currently holds an overall record of 10 and 9. Four wins, five losses in the Big Sky Conference. The University of Idaho, coached by Tim Floyd and assistants Kermit Davis, Brent Iba, and Randy Bennett, are currently 15 and 7. Seven wins, two losses in the Big Sky. Now let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's ball game. At a forward for the Bengals from Idaho State, a 6'3 senior from Deland, Florida, number 23, Chase Brown. For the Vandals at forward, a 6'4 junior from Laurel, Mississippi, number 33, James Pitch. For Idaho State, the other forward is a 6'5 senior from Gary, Indiana, number 31, Rodney Harris. For Idaho, a 6'3 freshman from Ellisville, Mississippi, number 44, Ricardo Boyd. In the post for Idaho State, a 6'6 senior from Vallejo, California, number 32, George Davis. For the Vandals in the post, a 6'8 junior from Atlanta, Georgia, number 35, Raymond Brown. At one guard for Idaho State, a 6'1 senior from Seattle, number 12 is Troy Miles. For the Vandals, at point guard, a 5'10 junior from St. Louis, number 14, Antonio Campbell. The other guard for the Bengals, a 6'3 junior from Portland, Oregon, number 21, is Jim Rohde. And for the Vandals, a 6'5 senior from Portland, number 20, Kenny Luckett. Okay, we'll be right back with a tip-off after this timeout. tip-off ready as George Davis steps in against Raymond Brown of Idaho. The last time Atlanta was 56-52, uh, Idaho beating Idaho State at Pocatella, and that was a good win for Idaho coming off the loss to Boise State the same week. Uh, in that particular game, I think Idaho had a lot of balance. They had four people in double figures. Tip controlled by the Bengals as the Coming out of backcourt is Troy Miles, who had a hot night against Eastman last Thursday night. Certainly did. He made about four or five three-pointers in a row. Uh, which they shut him off the second half, but when they got on him in some more, better defense, but he can score. First foul of the ball game picked up by the Bengals. Troy Miles, and it's out of bounds to the Bengals, and when a scoreless tie so far just underway in the opening moments. Well, I think one of the keys, Len, is to have some balanced scoring for the Vandals. Boyd had 14 at Pocatello, Luck at 13, Fitch 12, and Brown 14. They'll need that tonight to win the game. Eyes Luck it on the wing, watched by Rody. Out front, Fitch. Inside feed to Brown. He goes up and over for the lob shot. No good. And underneath, it's grabbed by Rodney Harris on the rebound. Idaho State uh, doesn't feel a very big team. They're not a very tall team, but they rebound fairly well. Uh, there's about four players average four or five rebounds a game, so they don't depend on any one player to rebound. It's kind of a team effort. Idaho out rebounded them at Pocatello. Davis on the wing. Brody trying to penetrate in the lane. Gets back to Davis for a shot. No good. Out on the long rebound is Al Campbell. 
on to Brown. Brown fakes, has nothing there, so he comes out front to Luckett. Good discipline by the Vandals that time. If they didn't have the transition where they could score, then set up the offense. Jump ball. Well, Ricardo Boy is tied up by Troy Miles. And on the change of possession, it'll be out of bounds to Idaho. Now, at Idaho State, also, the, the Bengals got a lot more shots. They were 21 out of 53. Idaho shooting real well, 20 out of 36. So, uh, Idaho will have to, you know, continue that hot shooting percent tonight like they did the first half against Boise when they were 75. Boyd with a shot, no good, and a fight for the rebound. Harris grabs it, and there's a foul on the play. Play here we have a foul on uh, Fitch going up right there over the back. That's the first team foul for Idaho. James Fitch uh, a little bit quiet Thursday night. I think he'll have to be a, a factor to add to uh, the scoring and rebounding and steals. He's of uh, Raymond Brown and Kenny Luckett. Miles to chase Brown to Rody out front. Scoreless tie so far as Rody takes it to the baseline. He's checked off. Both teams similar on defense. Tight man to man as inside getting away is Rodney Harris. And the Bengals take the lead 2-0. Okay, Rodney Harris here averaging 9.7. Dribbles to the paint, lays it in. Good move by the senior. Uh, Idaho State is kind of a senior-oriented team as compared with the younger Vandal team. Three seniors, two juniors. As Luckett takes it into the corner, comes out to Brown. Brown playing outside. Whistle on the play. I ISU very a Double balanced. foul call. Double foul. Fouled on uh, Campbell and Miles. Miles' second foul. Referee warning next time they both may be ejected. Evidently, he's trying to get control of the game early, which is a good point uh, to make sure that it doesn't get out of control and both players have been warned. Miles comes out of there. And he's replaced in the lineup by Aaron Grizel, 6'1", sophomore from San Francisco. So Grizel will bring it down court. Both teams in a real tight man-to-man. -man. Coach Boutin says he hasn't used his own in 10 years, so we probably won't see his own tonight by Idaho State. Davis, as he gets Brown, fall on the court. And Davis is called for the travel. And it's a turnover against the Idaho State Bengals. And we'll see the turnover here. He drives. A little traveling there. Campbell working against Grizel. It is to Boyd. Penetrating inside for the little lob shot. Misses it tipped up by Marvin Washington, who is into the lineup now for James Fitch. I believe the foul was on Marvin Washington. Len, he went up with his left hand, but shoved off with his right hand. And the referee, some, he watched the replay here where Marvin Washington, he drives, goes up, misses a shot. That's Boyd. That's Boyd. Shot. All right, Marvin Washington goes up there with the left hand and tips it, but he shoves off with his right hand. And some officials don't watch that, but it was a good call by the official. Grizel to Davis on the left wing. Back to Grizel. Brody. Had a great year last year for the Cinderella Bengals. Won their way into the NC playoffs out of the Big Sky Conference championship playoffs. There's a reaching in foul on Raymond Brown. His first has reached in on George Davis. That foul on Raymond Brown is his first. 2 nothing. Idaho State in a low scoring affair with 17.05 remaining. First they, period. they had a good game landing offensively against Eastern and uh, pulled it out at the end. They shot 29 out of 53 and a good free throw shooting team, 17 out of 20. And Rody only got two points in that game. They won without his major offensive threat. Davis goes inside and uh, a nice rejection by Marvin Washington. But he's okay. called for the foul. Here you see the head and shoulder fake. He drives down the paint from behind. Raymond Brown is called for the foul. And I think teams will attack Idaho that way. They will try to get Raymond Brown in foul trouble because uh, Idaho's bench for inside people is suspect. As evidenced by the Boise State game, they really couldn't rest Raymond, I didn't feel. And I thought that was a factor in the game. Davis at the free throw line uh, gets the brick up off the front of the rim. Davis will have the second one. 
And it's 3 0. Idaho State in the lead. Campbell watched by Grizel, goes in the corner to Luckett. Tight man to man by the Bengals. Both teams similar in offense and defense. At the baseline, Luckett for the shot, and he has to come through. Three to two. Okay, Kenny Luckett drives baseline, goes up for the nice jump shot. It's nice to see. I think Kenny, when he tends to start shooting well at the start of the game, he has a better overall game. A little pressure by the Vandals. Bengals break it, get over the timeline. Chase Brown has a shot put up. Ooh, what a nice looking shot just inside. Nice the screen at the line. high post too, Linda, to uh, get that, get the man open for the shot. Campbell over the line. Drive to the baseline, puts up a shot, no good, and we have a foul. On the or foul is a charge on Altonio Campbell. Okay, Altonio takes it, he penetrates. What you got to do in your offense goes up. Nice defensive position by Idaho State there. On, so it's the charge call, good call by the official, it looked like. And Lorenzo Nash comes in to replace Altonio Campbell. At point guard. Strong defensive teams like Boise State, Idaho, Idaho State are really work hard on taking the charge. So you know if you go in there and leave your feet, you're generally in trouble because those type of teams that are strong defensive teams will take the charge. Idaho State certainly exemplified that there. Pressure by the Vandal. Little 2-2-1. Two, two, Raymond Brown being the safety valve. <laughs> Hook pass by Rody and they break inside for the easy layup by Chase Brown. And it's a 7-2 run for the Bengals. Chase Brown just gets it and goes to the hoop. Excellent play by Chase Brown. Vandals very, or the uh, Idaho State was very patient attacking that first until he got the ball there. Bucket looks inside, brings it out to Lorenzo Nash. Yes, Idaho State might be called that blue collar team. They really work hard out there. Talking with their trainer, Phil Lucky from Sandpoint, Idaho, before the game, a longtime friend, he was pointing that out. He said, boy, they aren't very tall, they aren't very short, but they really work hard on offense and defense, both ends. Foul is on Davis, his first. Three team fouls for the Bengals. And we'll watch the feed in here to Raymond Brown. And the official made the call. Lorenzo Nash triggering the pass in. And the corner to Marv Washington, the wide body of the battle. It is to Luckett. They're really pressuring him tight. Brown on the turnaround. It goes as it got a little roll off the front of the rim. And Raymond gets his first hoop of the night. 7-4 Bengals. Brody. Off to Chase Brown. Interesting matchup in this particular game is score versus score. Kenny Luck and Rody are checking each other man to man. That was a nice penetration inside that time by Rodney Harris, and he went up in a traffic jam to get a tough bucket inside. Nine to four by they're off to a good start. Real physical checking. As Boyd, as he goes baseline for a five-footer. Hey, Ricardo Boyd did score double figures. Uh, he had 14 at Pocatello, and as, as I mentioned earlier, he has to do that tonight. Overguarding by Marvin Washington. And we'll be back with more basketball action right after this timeout. Page for nature. And here in Hawaii, there are more than 6,000 species of plants, animals, and insects found only in the Hawaiian Islands. In fact, Hawaii ranks number one in the world for its number of native species. And that's because of its extreme isolation, 2,500 miles from the nearest continental landmass. Here, plants and animals simply evolved in their own special ways over millions of years without outside influences or disturbances. Until about 1,300 years ago when man arrived. Hawaii's first settlers, the Polynesians. This time on Nature, we celebrate the flora and fauna of our 50th state, which Mark Twain called the loveliest fleet of islands that lies anchored in any ocean. Thank you. 
Tune in tonight at 7 on KUID. 14-29 remaining in the first half where the Bengals leading the Vandals 9-6 and it's been a real physical battle so far. We look for a lot of fouls in this one. Certainly is, Lynn. I think defensive uh, battle would be a key word too, although Idaho is giving up only 56.5 points a game and Idaho State 66.6, but both teams play excellent defense. Another factor I think would be turnovers uh, first and second half. You know, against Eastern, Idaho State had zero turnovers the second half as Idaho had 10 the first half. And uh, tonight, probably the key fact would be rebounds. Idaho State out rebounding Idaho five to one. And Idaho was State shooting four out of five for 80%. Very excellent shooting. Vandals three out of seven. Shot at the line is up and good. Roy Miles. Second one good. Interesting stat on uh, Miles. Uh, he was 0 for 15 to start the league. And now he's shooting 56%, so he certainly turned it around. Out of bounds to the Vandals. They trail 11 to 6. Pitch back in, replacing Marvin Washington. Well, Washington's still in it, excuse me. With that particular combination, you're, you know, Marv Washington's not a scorer, then that means the other four have really got the burden of putting in a lot of points. points. Not only Raymond Brown and Kenny Luckett, but the others. And that's the key to their success tonight and the rest of the year. Luckett from the baseline. An air ball is grabbed off by Raymond Brown, and we have a whistle on the play. Okay, here we go on the replay. Raymond number 32, Davis. George Davis. George Davis that time on the back, uh, falling Marvin Washington, I believe. The fourth team foul against the Bengals. Second one for Davis. In the corner, Raymond Brown uh, sets up, uh, launches a rocket from the corner, just inside the three-point line, and it's 11 to eight. Idaho State, a shorter team, they must have trouble with inside defense, like checking Raymond Brown. Sadler for Eastern got 40 points on Thursday night versus their inside defense. Brody on a drive to the baseline, dumps it off back on a nice feed. Davis up with a shot. Offensive foul is called, and that's his third. That's the type of defense we just talked about, Len, where good teams like Idaho, Boise State, Idaho third. State play that great defense. You're going to get the charge. We'll see it right here. Penetration by the guard. Excellent uh, feed there. Comes in. Number 33, Fitch takes the charge. Davis goes out, and Gordon Bean, a 6'7 senior from Elk River, Utah, replaces him. So it's uh, Lorenzo Nash on the handle, out high to Marvin Washington on the wing. A little help from Lorenzo Nash, a spin move into the lane by Fitt. And the bucket goes. And it's 11-10, the Bengals fail by one. Okay, James Fitch here going up for the nice extension on the jump shot, scoring. That's good to see some scoring out of Fitch and Boyd scoring early in this game also on a jump shot. Officials made a clap of the hands uh, indication to one of the other officials. I don't know what it meant, but the game progresses on as Troy Miles back in after sitting out on the pine for a few moments. It pass off to Rody. Hi, Chase Brown. Wooden Bean on the handle. Jim Rody holds up number five. That's the play he wants to run. A lot of motion there, a lot of screens down low. Locked down to 15 is Gordon Bean. Gives it to Rody. Rody, long range, no good. Rebound fought for, and there's a foul on the play. Going for the rebound. Kenny Luckett uh, drawing the foul. That's good. his first. Seventh team foul against the Vandals. Hey, Kenny Luckett here. The ball is, Rody takes a long shot. And the ball bounds way back. Two Idaho State people go after it, and Luckett just comes over the top and fouls. Kenny did foul out Thursday night against Boise State. He tends sometimes to get a cheap foul or two, and that hurts. Uh, they need his uh, scoring. Free throw, defense. no good, and Bean comes up with it, goes inside, doesn't get it, and the rebound is hauled down by the hardworking Raymond Brown. I think Bean was intimidated a little bit by Raymond Brown. He did take a very good shot. Bad pass, but it winds up in the hands of Luckett. And a crowd in. 
They feed it into Brown, and he and a follow away shot, and it comes back to him as he'll feed it out to Nash and to Luckett, and they'll set the play on top. Barb Washington, not in there to score, just to get the ball back when they missed the shot, and a bank shot by James Fitch, and he has to come alive along with Luckett, as Dean has explained, for the Vandals to be in this one as they lead for the first time 12 to 11. Roy Miles. Vandals that time luckily getting a second shot at the basket. They're going to have to do that some more, get that second and third shots out of their offense. Miles for a three-point try. Bingo. Boy, and he is quick with the release. To make it 14 to 12. He made okay. Miles here on the three-pointer. Quick shot. He made five straight against Eastern Washington, and then he missed his next four. So very little ball as Miles and a bounce pass back. Excellent pass. And the jam to Rodney Harris. what the official calls. That was a beautiful two-on-one break by Idaho State. Goes up for the jam, grabs the rim. Lorenzo Nash comes out, and Antonio Campbell comes in to replace him. The referees are having some discussion. I don't know if there's been a call. Evidently not. But that time was a two-on-one. The, the Idaho State came right down both sides of the paint. They forced the defense to commit, just like you draw it on the playbook and uh, work on in practice, and he dished off the nice bounce pass and jammed it, as Vital slam, bam, jam, I guess. <laughs> Carter Boyd slipping around, and we have an overguarding foul on Jim Rohde. His first 16 to 12, the Bengals have regained the lead. And the Vandals take it out in front of the Bengal bench. Boyd to pitch. Burns takes it to the baseline and a reaching in foul on Gordon Bean. Gordon Bean is, uh, you know, gives him a chance to rest some of the other players. He's not a prolific scorer, not a great defensive player, but he does allow some rest. Like, he doesn't take many shots a game. Uh, Took one shot against Montana State, two against Weber, three against Eastern. He's not a really prolific score, but it does give them some uh, time to rest their other players. Seventh team foul for the Bengals, and Fitch at the line for the one plus one. No good, and the rebound by Raymond Brown, and he puts it back for two. Off of the missed free throw by Fitch. Great effort by Raymond Brown. James Fitch had a great game against Idaho State. He had 12 points and eight rebounds at Pocatello. Roy Miles, Rody along the right side. They come out high and trying to penetrate in the lane is Bean. The Miles goes in the corner, fires up a shot over the basket, and Fitch grabs it for the Vandal. Up quickly to Campbell. James Fitch is uh, Fitch I'm really low. helping him tonight. Campbell inside feed to Brown on the fall away from six, and he buries it at the baseline. And it's pretty impossible to stop that shot. Boy, he's fading away. It certainly is, Len. Watch Raymond Brown. He kind of gets a little hitch. He gets a lot of spin on the ball, too, but it goes right to the bottom of the net. 16 all, first time of the ball game. I thought he was outstanding Thursday night against Boise State. Just best, did a lot of things. Best game of the year, and he had to be tired. He went end-to-end. -end. Played the whole game without relief. As a travel on Rodney Harris. And a turnover against the Idaho State Bengals. Well, this team is certainly you know, one balanced. One player, uh, they're all between 9.5 and 12.9 scoring. They just really have, that's great balance for Idaho State. No great score, just five guys out there working hard playing team basketball. That's Bouton style. Inside feed to Brown. He has to come out of there as he's called for travel. And I control it. Substitute coming in for Rodney Harris. Okay, the feed there, he's nudged a little bit. He's bumped. He figures that he's going to get the call, but he doesn't get the call, and it's called for traveling. 9.55 remaining. is tied at 16. We'll return after this timeout. She was an overnight sensation, a performer who touched old and young life. 
everybody loved her. Yet, most people had never heard of Alberta Hunter before she triumphantly returned to singing in 1977. In fact, she had already enjoyed a 40-year career that had brought her international fame. Then she disappeared from public life, only to stage one of the most spectacular comebacks in show business history, all at age 82. Be watching Monday at 9 on KUID. Okay, a nice feed to Raymond Brown on the inside there. He thinks he's got, got shoved, and he did, but he didn't hear. He should have kept playing because there was no whistle. You can't as assume that the official's going to make the call every time. He just has to keep playing and hope that the official will make the call. And Raymond then got the travel call, so Idaho State has the ball. Miles and Rody out of backcourt for the Bengals. Tied at 16, 950 remaining in the first half. Idaho State shooting very well, 6 out of 9, 66% compared with the Vandals, 8 out of 15. That's a factor thus far. Rebounds are the same, 7-7. Seven, seven. Brody to the baseline. Miles penetrates the hook pass to Bean, who takes the shot in and out, no good. And the rebound put up by Gordon Bean, no good. And the rebound pitch. Campbell working out high, gives to Marv Washington. Into the baseline, Al Tonio Campbell, not a scoring threat. Inside the pitch, he is as the shot goes up. And what do we have? We have a traveling call. I didn't see the call. Uh, must, must have been because there was no foul, so it had to be a travel. Great, pitch. great move. James Fitch has come to play tonight. So negate the basket, tied at 16. Not too many turnovers. It's four turnovers for each team. Idaho State creates about 20 turnovers a game normally. At the baseline, a feed to Alleman. It was in uh, Darren Alleman is into the ball game. That was a very nice pass by Rody. Uh, one of the things you needed in your big people was hands. I know Al McGuire's uh, alluded to the fact that three things a big man has to have. Uh, he has to be able to jump, but he also has to have great hands to catch the ball. Now, Johnny Wooden always said that, too, about passing. You must be able to pass it and catch it, and that was a good pass. There's the alley-oop to Brown, but he's too far away from the back. He takes the shot anyway, and underneath, Marv Washington for the tip in, and no good, and Alleman comes down out of the crowd with the rebound for the Bengals. That was a tough tip in for Marv Washington. There's a question there. Do you tip it in, or do you go up and get it? Keep the ball high, come back down. Steal the ball by Fitch. The transition away from the slam dunk. And that gets the crowd into the ball game as the Vandals take the lead, 18-16. Well, Jim, okay, here we go. James Fitch, certainly the MVP for Idaho thus far in the game. Excellent play. Troy Miles, three-point try, no good. And a long rebound goes out, and we have a foul called on Troy Miles as he felt it Campbell to the floor. Boy, that was a questionable call after the shot. Troy Miles just got buried, uh, shoving into him after he took the three-pointer, and then they both went to the ground. The official called the Idaho player. Miles goes out with his third foul, and he's replaced by Aaron Grizel, the sophomore from San Francisco. You know, it's a great trick after a shot. A guy will just bury you with his uh, rear end into your midsection and make you think about that every time you shoot again, and that happened that time. And, uh, the official didn't call it uh, on the defense. Raymond Brown gets his first rest in two ball games with Ken Luckett coming in to replace him. It's a good point, Len. I think when you play two tough games on a Thursday, Saturday, you got to find a way to rest a player of Raymond Brown's caliber, who Kelvin Sampson, the WSU coach, says is NBA potential. Brody comes out, and Rodney Harris comes back into the lineup for the Bengals. Campbell at the line, notches the free throw, and it's 19-16. Campbell is a 64% free throw shooter on the year coming into the ball game. Notches two, and it's 20 to 16. The biggest lead of the night for the Vandals. Both teams rely a lot on their defense to create their offense, but uh, thus far, neither team has got a lot of offensive scoring out of their defense. Grizel has it poked away, but picked up by Chase Brown. Brown working around the perimeter of Grizel. They come out front to Rodney Harris. 
Not a real complex offense. A high post and a uh, man, and then the other four rotate, pass and go away and cut through. Kind of a four-man game. Once in a while, a high post will uh, make a move down the paint. There's a shot put up, no good, and the rebound taken by Ricardo Boyd as that shot was launched by Michael Green, who is now in there. And traveling is called on Ken Luckett, and the Vandals turn it over. It's good pressure defense that time. The Idaho State defender really got in Kenny Luckett's face, so he couldn't see where to pass the ball. You see it right here, number 25, Aaron Grizzle. Now we got number 30 on him, nose to nose there, Michael Green, but he couldn't see out to make the pass and end up traveling. When a, guy, when a player picks up the ball like that, you want to get in his face so he can't see out. Shot by Grizel and going high to clear was Marvin Washington. Campbell racing down court. Out front, Fitch launches a long one and hands it just inside the three-point line. 22-16 Idaho with seven minutes remaining in the first half. Aaron Grizel with the ball for the Bengals. Watched closely by Antonio Campbell. Out front, Chase Brown. They get it inside. A nice play to Rodney Harris, and he makes the bucket and is fouled on the play. He'll have a chance for three. Excellent offense by Idaho State that time. They had him isolated low, and there could be no offside help. There was just one player on the baseline. It was a nice feed. Went up through the foul. Gordon will three point play. Gordon Bean checks in, replacing Alleman for the Bengals. Darren Alleman from a sophomore from Laramie, Wyoming, 6'9. They seem to recruit in a lot of places. Only one local player, one freshman from Pocatello, Idaho. Uh, John Murillo, 6'4 freshman. Harris gets the three on the back end drive from the free throw line to make it 22 19. Pocatello High School, evidently Botan's son is an excellent player. 6'7 sophomore is averaging 20-some points and lots of rebounds for the JV team. Evidently playing very well according to Ricardo Boyd. Phil Luck fall away. Bad shot by Fitch, way out of position. And it goes into the hands of the Bengals. Michael Green. They don't really push the ball up the floor that time, or uh, I don't stay very fast. They kind of walk it up the floor. They want that half-court offense. Take four, five, six passes, and then get the good shot. Nice pass. Nice pass dumped off inside, but the Vandals force them outside Short. with a long-range shot and picked off on the rebound by Ken Luckett. Idaho should probably dominate on the boards. A much smaller Idaho State team. They did at Pocatello, 34-22. Looking outside on the wing to Boyd. Baseline to Kent to uh, Jerry Carter now in there. The sergeant, his first action of the night. Luckett tries to feed off to Carter and we have a whistle on the play. Kenny Luckett hasn't gotten a shot, shot off much tonight. They're really playing good defense on Ken. And sometimes that frustrates you a little bit. He was going to shoot his turnaround that time, but drew the foul. Michael Green picks up the foul, his first. Jim Rohde checks in to replace him. And at the line is Ken Luckett. 71% shooter from the free throw line, 55 out of 77 coming in. Look at the free throw, good. As he gets the first one down. One out of two from the field. Two out of two from the line now for Ken. And a 24-19 lead for the Vandals with 5.40 remaining in the first half. Aaron Grizel picked up by Luckett as he crosses the line. Okay, one four set they go now. inside to Bean. He has a clear alley and uh, misses it, but on the follow is Rodney is Harris, hurt. and Bean went heavy to the court. May have hurt an arm as that's what he... He's looking at right now. There goes a longtime trainer here. Bean, it's a 1 4 set. He just goes to the basket. There's nobody there because of the offensive set with four guys across the free throw lane. He goes down and grimacing in pain. There's Phil Lucky, the longtime trainer at Idaho State. He was a long distance runner for Idaho State, and he's been the trainer there for at least 20 years. Does a great job. Takes care of the North when they come down there for state basketball tournaments very well, also. Bean goes out. Replaced by Corey Bruce, a six four and a half freshman from Green River, Wyoming. It's a nice follow-up on that rebound to, to jam it. 
24-21 Vandals. Pitch to Boyd. Down high to Carter. He'll launch one from there. It doesn't go. A rebound taken down by Chase Brown. Idaho State uh, uses the three-point play a lot more. The last time these two teams met, Idaho State took nine three-pointers. Idaho won. Harris on the wing out to Rody, who will set the play on top, calling out instructions. The one-four set again. They hit the high post. Rody penetrating to the free throw line on the follow-up jump. No good. Rebound taken by Jerry by Ricardo Boyd. Excuse me. Well, Rody's not having a good night offensively, but he's pretty well taking care of Kenny Luckett thus far with four points, averaging 11 points a game. Luckett watched by Rody. Drops it out. Out front, Carter with a long range shot, and he gets it to go. It's just two as he was on the line. So Carter winding up his throwing arm, and it's 26 21. Idaho leads, 4 15 remaining in the first half. Corey Bruce. On the wing, they go inside, and we have a foul on the play. It's like a foul on Raymond Brown. They'll bring the wide body, Marv Washington in. Brown will come out with his third foul, and timeout has been asked for. And with 4.05 remaining, it's Idaho leading 26-21. Be back after this timeout. Stop this day and night with me, and you shall possess the origin of all poems. He is considered America's quintessential poet, but his first volume had to be given away. Here it is. The first version of Leaves of Grass, 95 pages, but they're just amazing. He dared to put everyday slang to his poems. You speak of poets having a good ear, but with Whitman you have to say he had a good mouth. You know, he tasted the words, they sound, they, they have a physical uh, body. And the sensuality of his work was considered offensive by many. If I cut sex out, I might just as well cut everything out. The dirtiest book is an expurgated book. Discover him for yourself, Walt Whitman. Next time on Voices and Visions. Join us Tuesday at 9 on KUID. Finals just in. Montana State defeating Nevada Reno at Bozeman 95-82. At Missoula at the half, Northern Arizona leads Montana 34-32. And up at Cheney, Boise State leads Eastern Washington 33-26 in the first half. Well, thus far, uh, Idaho, uh, I believe, is 12-2 and two when they shoot 50% or better. They're 11 out of 22 exactly for 50%. Uh, Idaho State shooting 8 out of 20. That's certainly down from their normal shooting percents. They were 21 out of 53. Uh, versus Idaho the last time, 29 out of 53 versus Eastern. So they're capable of shooting well. Rebounds uh, 14 to 12 favoring Idaho. Rodney Harris, a 55% shooter at the free throw line. Missed that one, and the Vandals grab it. Luckett has the rebound and uh, tosses it off. Brody, and they retain possession. Oh, Nash. To Washington pitch. Gary Carter. It's a tribute to both teams that they're taking care of the ball so well. You know, both teams like to create a lot of turnovers. Idaho State creates 20.4 a game, but there's only uh, 11 total turnovers. They're taking care of the ball a lot better than the. Uh, Luck it with a shot. About 13 away on a side angle from the left. 28 21. Vandals by 7. 3 25 remains in the first half. Kenny doesn't score a lot off the dribble like that. That was a nice move. He likes to get the ball and go up. Loose ball, knocked loose. As Lorenzo Nash penetrates all the way, feeds off to Carter from the corner. It won't go, and the rebound taken by Jim Brody. Very flat shot by Carter that time. Just hit the rim and bounded right back. Not too much arch on that shot. It was an excellent pass by the Vandals. Corey Bruce inside. inside, and the shot was missed that time by the Bengals, and the Bengals lose the handle. And Chase Brown missed an easy shot inside, but the Bengals get it back on the turnover by the Vandals. 
tough break. The Idle Vandals had three players right there, just all around the ball, and uh, through the mix-up, went out of bounds to Idaho State. Grizzell inbounding. Idaho man to manning out of bounds. Bounce place. underneath on the inbounds play, and traveling is called against the Bengals as Rodney Harris tried to penetrate inside. Okay, the out-of-bounds play here, man-to-man, -man, he tries to penetrate, picks it up, shuffles those feet. The guy checking the, the man taking it out is kind of in a one-man zone, the other four are man-to-man. -man. The Vandals in their set offense. Luckett at the baseline, watched by Rody. Bounce pass out to Lorenzo Nash on the wing. A lot of screening on the baseline. Good ball movement by the Vandals. Luckett tries to penetrate inside. Loose ball. And coming up with it is James Pitch on a great move. Pitch oh. is a man tonight. It's a nice hand from the crowd, as he well should. Nash Luckett from three-point range. Wow. This one no good. Rebound fought for. Goes out of bounds off of the hands. Uh, Chase Brown and the Vandals dodge a bullet. Okay, they're calling a play there, number two. That, may, that shot by Luckett may well just have been a little bit beyond his range. Yeah, a little bit. He had to crank to get that one there. That was a long shot for him right there. Pitch on a turnaround. Guns it up and down. And he's having a great game tonight, 30 to 21. Hey, James Fitch on the turnaround there, he's just uh, outstanding as far as his total play. Defense, rebounding, steals, shooting. Uh, Raymond Brown and Kenny Luckett have been a little quiet, and James Fitch has uh, come to the rescue. Five for seven from the field. Out high, Rodney Harris. They throw it away. As uh, a cut roadie going in the wrong direction. As soon as we mentioned, there's very few turnovers. We're getting quite a few in the last minute. Minute 35 remains in the first half. 30 to 21 as the Vandals trying to put a little air between them and the Bengals. Luckett out high to Fitch on the wing to Lorenzo Nash and he is fouled by Aaron Grizel. A little shove pushing him out of bounds with the ball. Okay on the sideline there he's driving uh, gets fouled. Body contact, Fisher makes a quick call there. Keeping the game, they're keeping the game uh, called very closely. I think it's an interesting point that the Vandals are playing somewhat good basketball without Raymond Brown. They're maintaining and actually extending their lead a little bit without Raymond. Nash is 79 percent at, at the free throw line. Shot is up and good. Dan Aikens going to make an appearance in the ball game for Idaho. I think. Uh, Part of their bench, Len, I feel if Aikens would come in and relieve him once in a while, you know, he's a big, strong, physical kid. Just give him that, like Bean does out there. He doesn't have to score a lot. Give him some defense and rebounding. And they got, there's a lot of season left, and they need some inside bench help. Marv Washington will come out of there. And Dan Aikens, from nearby Potlatch, an outstanding prep player. Come in, hasn't seen a lot of action. Saw some action earlier, but not since the conference has started. I know early in the season, uh, the young man from Potlatch got a lot of praise from his coach. Coach, he'd really improved. He's more physical, and and I think will be a factor in the rest of the season. The inside bench. There's Rody with a long range bomb. He gets three. Rody well, Rody was the MVP in the Big Sky Tournament last year when Idaho State won it. Uh, he's been quiet for a lot of this season. 32-24. There's a reaching in foul on Aaron Grizel. That's two in a row on him, isn't it? The last time down the floor he made the foul like that. Yeah, that's two. I don't think Coach Botan likes those uh, fouls. Here we go right here. Nice move. Reach it in. A lot of officials, or at least some, I shouldn't say a lot, make that call automatically. Uh, they don't let that particular play go. So Nash at the line. He has a pair so far. I suppose if you really carry it, as I mentioned before in previous broadcasts, a lot of coaches do scout the officials and have let their players know as part of the pregame how certain officials call. Two out of three as Rodney Harris goes high to clear it off for the Bengals. 50 seconds remaining in the first half. They go inside to Chase Brown. And a turnaround from eight away. Makes it 32-26 as the Bengals make a run at the Vandals. Chase had a good game against the Vandals last time. He was 7 for 11. 
Ash, Carter, to Fitch, to Luckett. They want to get it to Fitch. He's the man with a hot hand. Nash, Certainly is. Fitch on the wing. He's got Bean on him. He should be able to quick him. He does. He tries. And Bean fouls him. So James will go to the free throw line. Foul is on Gordon Bean, his second personal foul of the ball game. Gordon Bean is 6'7 and not real quick, so that's a mismatch as far as uh, him trying to check Fitch. About half the crowd we had uh, Thursday night the Bronco game. That well, was a great crowd. Uh, 6,500 rest of the year, but a little over 3,000 here tonight. The missed three throw by James Fitch, Aaron Grizel, and Chase Brown. Probably want uh, Rody or Miles. Six seconds remaining at Miles before the half. The game. Rody goes up with a follow-away jump. This one misses everything, and Fitch comes down with it. Launches. Oh, he launched the shot from 70 feet away, and it's centered right in the barrel, but it wouldn't go down. It would not have counted. It would not have counted. Halftime score, Idaho 32, Idaho State 26, and we'll return after this halftime intermission. As an investor in public television, you can see your dollars at work anytime you turn your set to KUID. It's an investment that preserves the past, enhances the present. And envisions the future. 